When it comes to cutting these kind of concave pieces of geometry like this, and adding sharpening under subdivisions to these corners, there is one cut that is probably the most useful thing you will ever learn about modelling. Now, when I discovered this, my jaw dropped as I'd been flailing around trying to cut these kind of details and trying to teach myself how to do it. And I've stumbled on this cut and it's pretty much revolutionised the way I think about modelling. Now, that's quite a big statement, but it is the most important cut you'll learn as it is applicable to so many kind of advanced topics and situations in 3D modelling. Now, the way that I would have done this before is I would have got my geometry, I would have got the knife tool in loop mode, and I would have cut in a bunch of cuts like this to effectively box cut this corner. And while I'm here, why don't I just actually sharpen these other corners up like so. Pretty standard procedure. Now when I subdivide this, you can see I get a pretty good result here. And indeed, this is not a bad method of cutting this corner. The main drawback to this is I'm left with all of this useless topology here, all these extra edges and if you start cutting a lot of detail in this way your mesh is going to become extremely complicated extremely fast with all these three edge runs propagating into your mesh now there is a way that you can get around this and what you could do is get your weld tool grab your selection tool grab three points And because we had the weld tool active before, I can hit the space bar, go straight to the weld tool, click anywhere on screen, it will essentially weld those three points to the center point. And then I would hit space bar again, selection tool, three points, space bar, weld, and keep going like this, juggling backwards and forwards between selection and weld. It's a pretty fast way of welding this kind of thing. Then go into edge mode and grab these two edges and dissolve them to make two quads. Here you can see I have one, two, three, four edges on this quad. One, two, three, four on this quad two. And what this does is minimizes this kind of cut to just this area of geometry, which is the thing you're wanting to do when you're modeling. You don't want all these cuts to propagate out into your mesh. You want to internalize your cuts to the area that you're trying to cut. So if we look at the subdivision now, you can kind of see that the flow is slightly weird. It's crossing over into here. But, you know, it's still doing its job. Now, there is a better way of doing this. And first of all, let's go in and let's cut these convex corners and what I'm going to do is just leave this bare for now so I can show you the cut. So what I'm going to do is borrow these two edges to cut the detail into this corner. Now this is why I call this the borrowed edge. Again I don't think that's the proper terminology but that's what I call it. So I'm going to move these edges over. So first of all, if I'm going to get rid of these edges off of this point, I need to support this point with an edge, otherwise it will disappear. So what I do is I get my knife tool in line mode and I cut diagonally into this point. So that's the first step. Now, in order to move these edges over, what I'm actually going to do is cut from the point that they are connected to, to this edge. And I'm going to do the same thing here. So now I end up with this. Now, all I have to do to finish this off is dissolve my original edges. And if I do that, I get this. Now, immediately you can see what I've actually created here is an edge loop. 
that is running around this feature. So knowing how to do this is pretty important. Now before you perform this cut, when you're creating your mesh, if you have a piece of detail that is concave like this, you basically need to surround it with three polygons, as this is what facilitates the borrowed edge cut. You can't really do this unless you establish this kind of topology around your feature to start with. And this is quite a big consideration. So you're always kind of thinking ahead when you're building your meshes. OK, I have a feature like this. I need to get these three polygons around it because then it makes cutting this piece of geometry or the borrowed edge cut very easy indeed. And then to sharpen the edge along here, because I have this edge flow, I could grab the knife tool in loop mode and simply cut around like so. I could take this edge by just double clicking it because it has edge flow. I can select it, slide tool, command, slide the edge, another good way of doing it. And when I subdivide, I have this nice sharp feature here. And also you can see that the edge flow is a lot simpler than our previous example. What's happening here is that you can see that the edge flow is kind of draining into this section. Now, if I were to boundary loop select this edge, get my move tool, grab my Y axis, bring a control cut down and then extrude down. You can really see the way the edge flow is kind of draining down into this surface here and again we've easily been able to limit this sharpening detail on this corner to the area where the actual sharpening is happening none of our edges are propagating into this part of the mesh so it's very easy to keep this thing contained so if we look at these two subdivisions together we can clearly see the borrowed edge is a less complex affair than our box cut version and one thing you'll also notice is that the inverted box cut has a five-sided pole right on this corner. But with the borrowed edge where we're establishing this loop around this edge, all of our points on this edge are four-sided. So each vertex has four edges attached to it, which is promoting this really nice edge flow not only down between the surfaces, but also around this shape. So what happens when you can't arrive at this kind of three quad scenario around a concave sharpening area? You can see on this mesh, I've managed to do this here on this corner, but where I've kind of retopologized the surface here using a spin edge, and maybe I've done this because I want to grab these polys and, you know, make a feature like this. And have a round end on the end here. I've ended up with the topology on this corner that I want to sharpen, which only has two polygons on it. What I have here is like a loop of polygons running down along this edge. So you may say to yourself, why can't I just move these points? closer to this one and same with this one obviously the closer these points are to this area the sharper this transition will be well the problem you have is that this mesh is curved and this was done just by shrink wrapping it onto a cylinder now the problem is that as soon as you move one of these points that is vital in establishing this curvature you essentially ruin the curvature and end up with a flat area in your mesh. This is even more of a problem here where these points are establishing this curve here. 
if I slide this point in, it's obviously going to pretty much destroy that. So your only real option is to start adding geometry to this mesh. You'll need to add extra cuts to sharpen this detail. Now the problem you get here is that by putting these cuts in, you end up with two engons. And if we look at the surface, you can see some distortions starting to come in. This would be further exacerbated if you tried something like this, where you can see this rather nasty deformation taking place here. So what you could do is try the same kind of cuts, but this time try to make them a bit more evenly distributed. In this case, you might do this, get rid of the end on, and just make a triangle and kind of do the same here. And you can see that this is starting to improve and those triangles don't really make much of a problem for you as the curvature isn't really too severe. You may find that isn't a problem. Now, if you have OCD like me, you'll probably want to get rid of these triangles. Now, the general rule of triangles is that if you have two triangles, you're in business because two triangles makes a quad. So you can usually always resolve these. And I could do this by just cutting a couple of edges in like that and then sliding these points to kind of make these more quad shaped. And now what we've essentially done is cut a loop around this feature. And indeed loops are very good at doing this. Our mesh is fairly even. And when we look at this, we shouldn't really see much of a problem. So this is one way you can get out of the scenario of not having three quads on a corner. Essentially, you cut a loop around the detail. Now, in the case of this area here, it's obviously very easy to sharpen this corner because all we have to do is do our borrowed edge. dissolve our original edges away and that's the corner cut. And you can see we get a pretty nice result going there. And we can see some shading weirdness going on here. Now what I could do to completely eradicate this would be to re-shrink wrap this back onto my cylinder Hitting shift, getting shrink wrap, dumping my cylinder in, and we may find that that goes away to a certain extent. And you'll probably get away with that. Now, both of these techniques do actually maintain the edge flow around the corners. When we look at the subdivision surface, we can see that this is obviously a much simpler solution and it doesn't propagate into our mesh quite as much as this scenario, even though cutting loops around concave features will do the job just as well. This, however, is definitely the preferred method. Now, this borrowed edge geometry, we see here that sharpening this concave corner here and this box cut that is sharpening this convex corner here on this piece of geometry have a very special relationship in subdivision modelling. This is because when you marry the two together, you have the fundamental cut structure for sharpening practically all extruded geometry when using subdivisions. And this is what we're going to look at in the next video.